Completely, completely, no more shall sin. Thy grace hath conquered reign within. Thy voice shall bid the tempter flee, and I shall sin completely. Yea, justified, O blessed God, and sanctified, salvation God, thy blood hath pardoned by. Lord will be, I ask no more, complete in me. Be justified, O blessed thought, and The views, opinions, positions, or strategies expressed on WLAF TV 12 do not necessarily reflect those of the staff, management, ownership, or advertisers of WLAF TV 12, 1450 WLAF Radio, FM 100.9, or 1450 WLAF.com. When every second counts, count on Vital Care Med Trans. You do have a choice when it comes to ambulance service in this area. So when you call 911, ask for the best. Wait a minute, are you out of here? Yes, we are. Oh, good. State of the art equipment and a well trained staff who stand ready to respond to your call. That's Vital Care Med Trans, when nothing but the best will do. Are we on, Honey Bee? Thank you, Honey Bee. Uh, folks, welcome. I'm Jerry Chadwell, your host for the, uh, the next uh, probably 45 or 55, 56, 57 minutes. Uh, probably only got one subject, maybe two to talk about tonight. Uh, I got a lot of papers to go with it. So, uh, it, 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 you know, it might take five minutes, might take 45. I don't know. Depends on how you work with me tonight. Uh, I like to appreciate uh, Vital Care. I was noticing that uh, Jeff Bond uh, put a statement on Facebook that, uh, uh, if I understood it right, that uh, during these last recent snowstorms they had, they've been as busy as they've ever been, and they kept up with things really well. I checked on that. They kept up with things really well, uh, answered their calls, took care of business, uh, took care of their patients, clients, I need to ask him what they what what they call them, whether they're patients or clients. Jeff, you need to pay, text me and tell me: Are they patients, clients? What are they? I don't. I don't. I've, I've never have asked him that. But uh, if you need ambulance service, when you call nine one one, ask for Vital Care. Uh, they've got plenty of staff. They've got the ambulances. They'll get out there and take care of you. Um, Riggs Drugs, I talked to Mr. Bob Fannin today, uh, make sure when you say Mr. Fannin, there's two of them, but I talked to Bob Fannin today, and uh, Bob gave me a, a sheet here, uh, he was talking about the, uh, the, the insurance situation that's still going on, uh, and there's, there's something extra that's come up, and some of you will know what it is, and some of you need to check on it, uh, but what it says here is attention Riggs customers who are on Medicare. You may get extra help to pay for the monthly premiums and prescription co-payments if the following two requirements are met. If you are single and your monthly income is $1,450 or less and your savings investments are not worth more than $13,640. Now in both of these cases when it talks about the savings investments it does not count your home, your vehicles, your personal possessions, life insurance, or burial plots. Okay? So, in the single, if your savings and investments are not worth more than $13,640. If you're married, your monthly income is less than $2,000 or less, uh, and your savings investments are not worth more than $27,250. Again, that's not your, doesn't count your home, your vehicles, personal possessions, life insurance, or burial plots. Uh, if you meet these guidelines, ask our staff how to apply for extra help. And then Bob talked to me about this a little bit. Um, 
I'm not real good on these insurance things, folks. And be honest with you, he spoke a little bit above my head. Uh, I'm hoping he's going to be on here next week, and he's going to. We talked about it. He's going to try to be here next week, and we're going to talk about this a little bit because this is really important to some folks. I mean, this day and time, you know, when the insurance prices skyrocketed, benefits dropped a lot, except if you work for the government. Obviously, we talked about that. They went up, but their benefits are still incredibly unreal. Uh, but if you're in one of these situations, single, monthly income is less than it's 1450 or less, or monthly income if you're married, $2,000 or less, uh, you need to go down there to Riggs. Uh, that insurance agent is still down there. Bob told me he's still down there. And this program apparently is called Extra Help. And he said he's had a lot of folks come in and got signed up for it. It's helping them on their monthly premiums. It's helping with the, the prescription co-pays. Uh, and it, he told me it's saving people a lot of money, okay? Uh, and, you know, when you get to that situation, we're on Medicare and all that, you know, you, you need all the help you can get, folks. It's just, you know, it's, I mean, a lot of folks have lost their retirement. They've lost their, your, you, know, uh, you know, over the past bunch of years, you know, when the economy fell apart. Uh, so get down there, and the reason I'm taking so much time on this is because this is important, okay? This is really important, and Riggs Drugs is, is doing whatever they can to help you get this thing straightened out. And I think, my understanding is, I think you've only got till the end of the month uh, to go down there and do this. I think that may be wrong on that. Hopefully if Bob comes next week, or if he's watching the show, he can call in or text, text me and let me know. You know but I think it ends at the end of the month. Uh, but I may be wrong, so uh, but we'll find out for sure. But for now, I know if you know, if you need what's called a little extra help, go down there and ask them, okay, and check on this thing. Uh, Bob told me it's a great program and it's and it's and it's benefiting a lot of people. So there's a few news things that I want to talk about uh, before I get to my uh, subject. Okay, I'm looking to see if somebody thought. Okay, didn't text me. There's a few news things, uh, and just like always, if you've got something else you want to talk about, we'll, we'll you know we'll discuss it. Uh, one of the things I certainly want to talk about is uh, Digger passed away. I don't know how many of you knew Digger, uh, Vaughn Wilson down there at the gas company, and then our sawmill hauler. Uh, Digger was a great fella. Um, I think he worked with the Shriners. I, somebody told me or I read somewhere or something that he worked with the Shriners for over 50 years. That, uh, you know, he he did things with the Shriners. Uh, you know, and, and uh, I, I don't know anybody that ever had an issue with Digger. Uh, and Digger was just the old peaceful, lovable fella. Cared about everybody. Um, you know, uh, the community would be a lot better if we had a lot more Diggers. And you know, and uh, he's just an old country salt, and he's just uh, good a fellow as you'd ever want to meet. And uh, I think they had, I think they were having his accepting friends tonight. I believe it was. But uh, you know, I just wanted to mention that old Digger was just Digger, just Vaughn Digger Wilson. He's just a good old feller. So uh, yeah, I think it's tonight, and I think they're going to bury him tomorrow. So, but uh, you know, send a prayer up for Digger's Digger's family. Uh, he's he's just a good old fella. So, uh, also I want to mention the uh, the Chamber of Commerce is going to host a social media marketing seminar. Okay, and this is free, folks. This is free. Small business folks, uh, whatever. I mean, ever. I don't know how many of you. You know, I assume most of you or a good portion of you get on the internet. You probably uh, you do Facebook. You do uh, the, these other things, Instagram, Twitter. I do Facebook. I don't do Twitter. I don't do Instagram. I don't do Pinterest. And But some of you do all that stuff. I don't. But, um, you know, but, but let me see what we got here. I can't. Okay. You're on the air. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, was wanting, I, I know what uh, last week you was talking about the uh, food giveaway that's going to be doing down here at Carroll Elementary. Right. Have you heard when they rescheduled that? Time? I have. I have not heard anything about that. I, I really haven't. Um, I did talk to somebody, and I was told they definitely are going to reschedule it. 
Uh, but I, the, the, as far as I know right now, they have not set a date on it. No, I knew if anybody knew that you probably did. Yeah, they. Uh, oh, uh, you know, what well, check with W check on WLAF's website. Do you get on the internet? Well, I listen to them every morning. You know, okay. WLAF will probably be the first place that you know that uh, that that's you know when they get it that that's probably going to be one of the first places yeah. that gets the new time. Yeah. So listen to the station, or you know, their, I look at their website every day. Yeah, I know WLF is the one that announced the uh, yeah. inflation, you know, the other morning. Right, so they, uh, but no, I have I actually did talk to somebody that's involved in that, and but and he told me that uh, he's he's 99% certain they are going to reschedule it, yeah. but he didn't have a date. And that was, that was you know, shortly after they canceled it, uh, you know, the other time. Okay. okay. If you haven't heard anything this week or weekend or something, if you think about it, announce it on your show this week. Or uh, oh, yeah. As soon as I find out, I'll announce it. No question about it. I know you will, buddy. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it then. Thank you. All right. Uh, but anyway, this uh, social media marketing class they're having is going to be, let me get back up here. I was, I was fidgeting there. It's a free seminar. It's going to be held Thursday, May the 3rd. I'm going to be in a class that day myself, so I won't be able to go. It's at 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, at the Campbell County Chamber of Commerce office down there on Main Street in Jacksboro. Uh, and somebody, the director of the Tennessee Small Business Development Center at Rome State Community College is the one putting this on, okay? Uh, so they're going to teach you how to, they're going to give you an overview of social media platforms, time management, and tar target marketing uh, and when you're doing Facebook and things like that, okay, uh, that stuff's important, folks, because, I mean, everybody's going to the, you know, uh, most of the world is going to social media and all that. And if you can, can, if you can target clientele, okay, on social media, that can get you some extra business. And this is a free class. This is a free class they're doing. So uh, let's see if there's any other announcements I want to make before I get started. Okay. Okay. Let me let me just get started. What I've got here is I usually don't talk talk state politics, but I'm going to talk state politics tonight simply because this school voucher program that Dennis Powers, our state representative, is so high on. Uh, would devastate Campbell County school system, I believe, and from what I understand, would have a. It wouldn't cripple it. It wouldn't shut it down or anything, but it would be very expensive. And according to Jeff Marlowe, uh, it would cause the county to have to have an 11 cent tax increase to make up for the money that would be lost on this voucher program. Okay, uh, there is a uh, article on WLAF's website. Uh, but it is such a fluff piece for Dennis Powers uh, that it it doesn't tell the whole story. That's just being honest, folks. Uh, I'm generally you know you know me. You've listened to the show. Uh, I look at uh, WLAF first thing in the morning every morning, uh, the Saturday and Sunday included. I check out WLAF, see what's going on. Uh, if you generally want the news, but there's sometimes that you know there's the uh, you know uh, I've never read anything negative. Whether whether it's deserved or not, about Dennis Powers on WLAF's web page, okay, and in this case, I think it's warranted, okay. I absolutely think it's warranted. Dennis Powers backed this bill that would uh, I, I don't know if all of you if you know what I'm talking about, but would have allowed school vouchers to go to uh, kids that were in school systems that weren't necessarily doing well. And it would have taken money out of, okay, right there is what I'm looking for. It would have taken money out of the local school system and allowed those kids to use the money that should have been gone to the local school system and go to a private school somewhere, okay? Got no problem with trying to, to, trying to elevate those kids' education. Got no problem with that at all. Okay. But at the same time, 
this is what's considered one of those unfunded mandates, the way it's originally written, okay? It's one of these unfunded mandates that basically the, the state legislature <laughs> tries to put a bill out there, put a law out there, make something law uh, that is going to cost a bunch of money, but they weren't going to fund it, okay? They weren't, they weren't going to fund it. Now, this bill... Once some of the legislators finally figured out it was not a good program for our state the way it was written, on the, the, the House of Representative sides, uh, they added 22 amendments to this thing, virtually killing the bill. Okay? On the Senate side, which passed it, okay, the Senate passed this thing, they added three amendments. I've got them all. I've got the 22 on the House side and the three on the Senate side. I've got them all right here, okay? Plus, I have a copy of the bill right here, okay? So, what happened on this thing, and, and, and like I said, Dennis Powers is one of the co-sponsors of this thing, okay? Um, as a matter of fact, if you had went to the school board meeting Saturday, um, they actually discussed this thing, and there's a quote, Faye Heatherly, school board member Faye Heatherly, is quoted on a WLAF article said this bill would hurt public education by diverting tax dollars away from the very, the very school districts that need it the most. Board member Faye Heatherly pointed out. Unfortunately, our representative, Dennis Powers, favors the bill and won't budge. Okay? Um, one, concern that the, one concern is that the school, school board members express is that a statewide voucher policy would allow parents who prefer to homeschool their children to receive taxpayer funds through vouchers, money that would be taken away from the state's available education funding. Okay, so uh, according to what the school system understood, you know, if, uh, if now there's qualifications you have to meet for this. Okay. Um, if 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 we're in the b bottom five percent of the education level across the state, um, a parent could decide to apply for this program if they were accepted. They could actually homeschool their child, and the financial money that should have the money that should have went to the school system could go to that parent. Okay. Now they have to be approved and all that. Okay. So, uh, Dennis Powers, our state representative, denied that this, that this bill would have hurt Campbell County at all, okay? Well, I've got an email that our finance director, Jeff Marlowe, sent out, and he sent it to a lot of people, okay? I've got an email from, Je from, from Jeff Marlowe and I'm going to tell you, okay, we've discussed Jeff Marlowe on this show several times. I've discussed Jeff Marlowe quite a bit, okay, uh, and I've, I've, you know, I've had disagreements with Mr. Marlowe over the years. He knows it. Jeff and I, I you know, I think Jeff and I are friends and, and, and you know, we'll be, uh, but, uh, you know, I've disagreed with him. He's disagreed with me. That don't mean we can't work together. That don't mean we can't work together for the better of the community. And I've never disputed that Jeff Marlowe is a very intelligent man, that when it comes to the numbers of this county and keeping up with the finances of this county, that man knows what he's doing. Okay? Never will dispute that. I think this that man knows. He knows every dime. He knows where it's at. knows how to find it. Okay? Uh, and he knows... Okay. Well, I got somebody texted me something I already know. So, um, I already know that. So, I'll get to that point. So, um, we'll, get, we'll get there. It's going to take me a little while, but we're going to get there. So, Jeff Marlowe, the way this thing was originally written, okay? Now, there were some amendments added to it later on that I'll get to and tell you what happened, okay? Uh, as Jeff Marlowe sent a letter to uh, Dennis Powers. And I want to read this whole thing because I want you to understand exactly what this, you know, like again, and I want to preface this again by saying 
I've got faith. When Mr. Marlowe says it's going to cost this county this amount of dollars, this amount of dollars, this amount of dollars, we're going to get in this amount of dollars, I've got faith that Mr. Marlowe knows what he's talking about. Okay? He checks these things out. He researches them. He makes, no, he makes sure he knows what he's talking about before he sends something like this out. Okay? The Camel County School says, or he, no, let me take it back. Dear, Ms., dear Representative Powers, as I understand the proposal to enact a school voucher system in Tennessee is to be voted on tomorrow, and I wanted to take this opportunity to request and encourage you to vote against any to vote against any such proposal. The voucher system proposal has the potential to be very detrimental to the Campbell County school system in the following ways. The Campbell County school system has approximately 5,500 students and if only 2% of the students opt to use the voucher system, which amounts to 110 students, 5,500 times 2% is 110, the Campbell County school system stands to lose approximately $550,000 in state BEP funds. $5,000 per each of those 110 students. The Campbell County school system would also have to provide an additional $1,700 per students in local funds to these 110 students to match the state BEP funds provided to each student, which amounts to an additional loss of $187,000. The collective financial loss to the Campbell County school system for these 110 students would amount to $737,000, okay? If this voucher program went through, Mr. Marlowe has got it calculated. If it had went through as it was originally written and sponsored by our state representative, Dennis Powers, who, if you look at the article on WALF, Board member Faye Heatherly says he supported this thing, he favors it, and he won't budge. Okay? The overall point is Dennis Powers don't have a clue what he's doing, folks. He just don't. He's never accomplished anything as a state representative, and this further shows he's down there, and I'm Republican, I don't deny, but he's, fur he's down there pushing the Republican agenda, and that's all he's pushing. It doesn't matter who it hurts, what happens. He's, he's going to push that Republican agenda to the end. Okay? And, and, and if it's, you know, I'm Republican, but if it's not good for our state, it shouldn't matter if you're a Republican or not, you just shouldn't do it. And I'm going to stand with Jeff Marlowe when he says we're going to lose $737,000 in funding if this program were to go through the way it was written, okay? Moreover, the 110 students reflected herein from the sample purposes would not be comprised of students all from one school or all from one grade and as such, the loss of the 110 students would have no impact to lessen the requirement. Now, this, get this now, would have no impact to lessen the requirement of the Campbell County school system to comply with pupil-teacher ratios established by the State Department of Education. In other words, the Campbell County school system would have to continue to expend the same amount of dollars regardless of the reduction in the student populace by these 110 students but would have to do so without the 737 in reduced state and local resources brought about by the voucher system. Or alternatively, the Campbell County Commission, the County Commission would have to increase local education funding to offset the loss of these funds, which equates to a property tax increase of 11 cents with a penny value of $68,000 in Campbell County. Okay. So if this program that Dennis Powers is so fond of and wanted to back, okay, didn't get the backing of anybody in this county before he set out to do this, okay, um, Mr. Marlowe saying we would have to raise 11 cents taxes to pay for just this program because there's a maintenance of effort and you still have to match that maintenance of effort. Even though they're taking this $737 out, that's my understanding from what I'm reading, you still have to match those funds. So the county commission really wouldn't have any choice but to raise taxes 11 cents. And folks, we've had enough tax increases over the last two years and got nothing for it. Okay, We don't really need another 11 cent tax increase because Dennis Powers wants to play Mr. Republican. Okay, So... Hopefully the foregoing information is enough to encourage you to be against any proposal to enact education voucher system in Tennessee. 
However, I would like to mention two additional reasons I think such a proposal should not be supported which extend beyond the impact of the Campbell County school system. First, as a general principle, the proposed education voucher system appears to me to violate the intent of the state constitution to provide free public education by removing public funds from public entities and placing such funds in the hands of private entities, taking public funds, paying for private schools. I, I'm not sure that's legal. And I think that's what Mr. Marlowe said. He's not sure that's legal. I'm sure if this thing had passed, there would be an agenda that is, or a challenge to that, excuse me, a challenge to that. Second, the proposed education voucher system appears to reflect a conclusion that public education does not work and we should throw in the towel in the pursuit of having quality in our public education system. I absolutely disagree with these conclusions. And this is Mr. Marlowe saying this. I would not be typing you this email today absent the education I received in the public education system of Campbell County and I am proud of that fact. Like all things the public edu education system in Campbell County and in, the, in Tennessee could be better but things cannot be improved by reducing the effort to improve them which includes the financial resources devoted to such undertakings things that can only be improved by increasing the effort to improve them. Okay. Uh, sincerely, Jeff Marlowe, Director of Finance, Campbell County, Tennessee. Okay, um, Mr. Marlowe saying it's going to cost seven hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars, to which has to be made up. There would be an eleven cent tax increase to go along with this. Okay, uh, I'm going to trust Mr. Marlowe's opinion more so than Dennis Powers' opinion, because Dennis Powers made the statement, if you read the article, and what I just read you, okay, on the article on WLAF, which usually I have great faith in, there's absolutely no mention of what Mr. Marlowe says at all. No mention whatsoever. Because WLAF chose to do a fluff piece. And I, I'm just being honest. Just a fluff piece. I'm going to take this call. You're on the air. Uh. I don't exactly understand uh, what you're saying since I don't have internet to look this up. Uh, explain to me what this has to do with homeschool. Uh, it, it could be a possibility that if somebody, if somebody failed in, in got approved in this program, that they could go to a homeschool as long as that homeschool is certified. And the money that should have gone to the school system would go to pay for the homeschooling. Well, but who would get to pay? Say, I want to homeschool my son or daughter. You, you would get the so, money. You would get the money. Well, now there's a qualification process for that. It doesn't mean automatically you'd get it. There's a qualification process for that. Uh -huh. But, but I think if you did homeschool, that's a job. I mean, a real job. Well, that, if, that you should, a parent should get the money. And that no, if you choose to homeschool, that's because you've chose to do that. Nobody's forcing you to do that. Nobody's telling you have to do that. If you choose to do that, that's your that's your deal. That's you've chose to do it. That that's your deal. Now, their, their programs like through churches and everything, that it don't even cost a parent to homeschool their okay. their daughter. Yeah, just because you so, choose uh, to homeschool, don't mean I should have to pay for it. Yeah, well, really that's what I'm saying. Have to because yeah. I don't family. Well, with this program, with this program, there's a possibility that you could start. The state would start paying you for that. Uh -huh. and that's one of the problems with it. Uh -huh. Well, but like I say, they're you know I know people that go through churches, homeschools, or yeah, for signs and dollars, and it you know they the state don't have to be involved right. in. Okay. Uh, but no, Dennis Powers is absolutely. Not my representative. Now, he's not anybody in Campbell County's representative. Dennis Powers, all he represents is the Republican hierarchy in Nashville. That's it. I tell you, this is not the subject you're talking about, but that man, he unfriended me on Facebook yeah. because I was asking for his help about getting team care and some other issues. With, he ain't going to help anybody uh, do anything. And uh, someone commented on why wasn't he trying to help me? And that man unfriended me on Facebook. Yeah, I can understand. I can see that. Dennis Powers is not my representative. He might, I, he, 
is absolutely useless. Do what's, a, what's better for the people. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I got another call. Huh? You're on the air. Hey. Hey. Uh, Marlo was being relatively high. Coming up with only a hypothetical 2% reduction. Yeah. Uh, what if that had been 5%? That'd be $2 million dragged out of the school. That'd be a 25 cent, another 25 cent. Uh, yeah. Increase. Well, see, one thing that about this program that the, uh, you know about this program in in the first year, and see, this is amazing, folks. In the first year, this was going to be uh, in different school systems pay different amounts. Marlowe was just basing this on what we pay for child in Campbell County. Yeah. Different school systems pay different amounts. Okay. So some of the school systems, uh, some of the bigger school systems. I mean, it would have taken millions of dollars out of their budgets. What if ten percent of our students decided to go? Well, there's a limit. There's a limit. The first year, statewide, there was only going to be five thousand students that could take advantage of the program. But that limit keeps going up. Every I mean, let me finish. Okay. The second year, it goes up to seventy-five hundred students. The third year, it went up to ten thousand students. And my understanding, the fourth year and beyond. It was going to be 20,000 students per year that could take advantage of this program, okay? Let's say that, uh, let's say that you have, uh, what is it? let's say an average of $9,000, what they cost per student, okay? Out of the public education system on 20,000 students with an average of $9,000 per student, okay? That would have taken a hundred and eighty million dollars out of the public school system in the state of Tennessee. Well, you saw what that would have crippled public school system. You saw what happened over in Union County, didn't you, with a virtual uh, education program? Yeah. They they had so many kids pull out of the system and sign up. Yeah. That the state had to step in and put a stop to it. They, well, and, and it's, uh, that wasn't the only reason they put a stop to it. That wasn't the only reason they put a stop to that program. You know that as well as I do. That program was not performing up to snuff on their testing. Uh, I read some various things on that. Well, everything I read today, were, they were not performing. Uh, their testing was just not performing well at all. But anyway, I thought Marlowe was being real nice with his uh, hypothetical two percent. Yeah, just going only two percent. You know, that's that, been a lot higher. It, it could have been. But when you look at, you know, in, in you know, and Dennis Powers wants to get on here and say it never was meant for Campbell County. It's like you, me, and you talked about it a couple of times. There's not a thing in this original bill I've got right here. There's not a thing in this original bill that says it's not for Campbell County or it's not for anything else. Now, there, there were 22 amendments on the House side of this thing that were added to this. As it dwindled down through those 22 amendments, it got down to it where there was only a small portion of the school system in the state that it that it applied to, and that's why it killed the thing. Okay, but now it's it's just tabled. It's not completely dead. They can bring this thing back up. Well, guess who didn't show up for the vote? Yeah, Dennis Powers didn't show up for the vote, and you know why that is. Even though he sponsored the thing, he's one of the sponsors. Okay. He was, he was running around wherever he's running around telling people this is a great thing, we need to do this. He was catching so much flack over it from citizens back here, okay, and from people like Jeff Marlowe telling him don't do this, uh, you know, he, he, couldn't, he, he couldn't figure it out for himself it was a bad program. But when he started getting stuff like this from Jeff Marlowe and I, I think our uh, school board members and, and uh, the chairman of the school board and maybe our school director all told him you're going you're going to devastate uh, the local program if you do this. When it come time to vote, he didn't even show up. He didn't bury his head in the sand, did he? I don't know what he what he did, but he didn't he didn't vote on this thing. And the only reason that you don't vote on something is because you don't want to have to have a record that you voted one way or another. That's the only reason you don't vote on it. Okay. Okay. You am I correct on that? Uh, yeah. You don't want to go on public record, even though he's one of the sponsors of this thing. Right. Okay. He didn't want to go on public record voting for it or against it because there's people in Nashville that wanted him to vote for it, 
people back here wanted him to vote against it. He knows it's an election year, and he knows this thing's going to come back to haunt him. Uh-huh. You know, and I can assure you, the closer we get the election, I'm going to bring it up more and more, and I'm going to challenge any of you out there who are Dennis Powers supporters, okay, to show me, show me, don't just tell me, show me, and, and uh, Hazel Valley, you can tell me the same thing, show me something that in the six or eight years, however it's, how long it's been that Dennis Powers has been down there, what has he accomplished? He ain't accomplished nothing as far as I know of. He got one law passed that was already on the books, didn't need to be passed. He's already on the books, but he, but he looked good going through the motions of doing it. I'd like to, I'd like to say more about Mr. Byers. You know, but he also got the, if I remember right, he was the lead sponsor on getting the electric chair brought back as, far, as part of the death penalty. And within two months after that, the Supreme Court struck it down and said you can't do that. You know, his Wasted a lot of time on that. Now, his logic behind that was if we had some kind of an uh, electrical emergency where the uh, uh, chemical machine or the machines that pump the chemicals into to the uh, uh, body of those convicted to die, yeah. if, if the power went out and those machines didn't work, then we could fall back on the electric chair. Yeah, there you go. How's that? Now, is that not fit Dennis Pires' logic or what? <laughs> that fits his logic. Okay. Well, there you go. Give it up. Thank you, buddy. You're on the air. Uh, was your program the one that had it on about the employees in the county offices using the computers and stuff uh, that wasn't to do with their work? That, that was in the state audit. And yes, I discussed that last week. Well, I tell you what, uh, I have got letters for for different people that I gave them their address over there, and uh, there was all kinds of junk mail. I want to see Global Pharmacy Plus Order Processing Center and all different kinds of mail and i gave them this address for uh four different people to send mail from the register of deeds office and they had to have sold them addresses to these companies now i don't think the register of deeds would be selling addresses well and then, now, they, the, anything in the Register of Deeds office, as far as I know, is public information. So, I mean, somebody out there could call the Register of Deeds and 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 ask them for uh, such a list of all the residences of Campbell County. Uh, you know, and and I don't know why they would say no, uh, and they may charge them for uh, you know for such a document. There may be a charge for receiving such a document. I don't know. Well, I, I can't figure out why that all this junk mail comes to the address that they've got for... Well, there's all kinds of places people can go to get your address. Well, not, that, not these, because these people don't live at that address. It was just for tax purposes from to know where to send the... Uh, you know what the taxes would be on it. Well, see, so you can go to the, uh, there's a state website, uh, uh, I forget what it's called, Property Assessor's Web, state, state website, that you can get uh, all kinds, uh, you can get who pays taxes at each property across the whole state. Well, uh, it's funny, though, that it all came to that one address. Yeah four people's addresses. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's this, you know, you, you can get that information anywhere. Well. I don't know about the Register of Deeds office. I, don't. Place it, I know that they, uh, they had all four of these and this address was at that office. Oh, okay. And the lawyer's office. Now, I don't think the lawyer's office would stoop that low. No, I don't think they can. Well, that's what I wanted to say about it. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Okay. 
You're on the air. Uh, this is a little bit different, but what's your, what's your opinion on uh, group home sports, uh, like uh, special needs uh, adults or children? I got no opinion on such a thing. Well, I'll tell you, I was falsely accused of using my daughter. Now, hold it a minute. Hold it a minute, okay? I'm going to tell you straight up, okay? If you've got an issue to talk about on this show, we'll talk about it. But if you want to talk about your personal situations on that, call somebody else. I'm not interested, okay? I'm talking about Dennis Powers. Okay, if you want to talk about Dennis Powers, then that's fine, okay? But you know, I let you call in here last week, and you got on here talking about your personal situation, begging for help, and I'm not going to let you do that on this show. Is that because my ex-husband's married to your... I don't know anything about what she's talking about, okay? Uh, I'm not going to let that lady in her personal life take over this show. I apologize, folks, but I made that decision. Uh, she called four or five times last week and carrying on about her personal situation and begging for help and all that. Uh, I didn't get to watch RL show Monday night, but my understanding she did that on RL show also. Uh, and I'm just, I decided I'm just not going to allow that to happen, to happen tonight. If she wants to call and talk about the issues that are taking place on the show or talk about any issue, that's fine, but we're not going to talk about personal situations on this show. So uh, I welcome any of you to call and talk about uh, the issues, the county issues, the state issues if you want to. But if you want to talk about personal issues, we're not talking about them on this show. It's just, I, you know, I apologize, but I, I have to be that way, okay? Uh, you know, we're just, we're just not going to do that. So I apologize for hanging up on the lady, uh, but it sounded like she wanted to start arguing. But, you know, I, I just, I had to set that. Uh, you know, because apparently I don't know why she decided to. I uh, haven't heard from her for you know in years, and you know. But anyway, so but uh, so anyway. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? We'll talk about it, okay? But uh, I will go back to if I can find a couple of these uh, amendments, okay? Uh, One of these, oh, here's the one, here's the one is Amendment 2 in the House, okay, uh, that said it's going to be 5,000, 7,500, 10,000, and 20,000 in school year 2019, 2020, and thereafter, okay? Uh, so $180 million a year, folks, that could be disappearing for public education. So... And there was another one I wanted to look at because one of the things on here, again, you have to qualify. And even the schools that these children might go to, these private schools or whatever, they have to qualify to be part of the program also. Okay, And I'm not sure that they would want to do this uh, because one of the amendments, and I should have marked it and I apologize, but I do have it here. One of the amendments said the school system uh, or the private school, whatever, has to agree to put up a surety bond for the amount of money that they are getting. Let's say they got 10 students at $9,000. That'd be $90,000. Let's say, ma'am, I'm not going to answer your call, so you can call all you want to. I'm not going to answer it. Uh, so, uh, 20 students, okay, at $9,000. What would that be? $180,000, okay? They have to put up a surety bond. And if a certain amount of the students that they took in under this program don't improve to a certain level, okay, then they have to pay that money back to somebody, okay? They have to pay it back. There it is. There it is. Okay. Uh, and here it goes. And this is all based on as representative by as represented by the value added assessment. <laughs> and what's value added assessment? Can we just not go by the scores the way they are? I mean the scores are what they are. Why do you do this value added assessment thing? I don't get that, okay? Uh, the the school's what they are. Okay, it's just a bad program. Okay, 
Now, one of the things, one of the first lines in this program, okay, uh, one of the first lines on the state bill, in, 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 and I apologize for bouncing back and forth. You know how my mind it works and gets frazzled sometimes, okay? Um, on this article, this little fluff piece that, uh, that, you know, that promoted Dennis Powers without, in my opinion, without actually telling the whole story, uh, when, when you do an article like this on this thing and you don't include what Mr. Marlowe said, uh, you ain't told the whole story. That's just me. You ain't told the whole story uh, when Mr. Marlowe says, I've read this and it's going to cost us $737,000. And WLAF had this. I know they did because I sent it to them. I think I sent it to them. I'm pretty, uh, I know uh, the chairman of the school board sent it to them. I think Mr. Marlowe sent it to them. But I know WLAF had what I read you before they did this fluff piece on Dennis Powers, okay, to try to make him look good. Because Dennis Powers said this was never intended to hurt, to do anything. It was never intended to work in Campbell County, okay. Well, why would you support some? Why would you be a sponsor of something like this if it didn't affect the counties that you're the representative of? Okay, why would you do that? Why would you get out there and support it? Okay, why would or if it's such a good program, why wouldn't you write it up in such a way that it, if you felt like it was a great benefit, why wouldn't you write it up in such a way that it did help your county if you thought it was such a great program? Okay. If you thought, hey, this is going to do great for all these other counties and all these kids, why would you back a program that didn't help the kids in the counties you represent? Okay, there's just something wrong here with the way Dennis Powers is explaining this. Okay, because he said it never was meant. And they said at the end, at the end, it was only supposed to help a small amount of schools down in Shelby County, down in Memphis. Okay, and there is an amendment to that kind of says that. Okay. Uh, again, they mended this thing down so much they had to kill it. They, they just, you know, and again, let, let me take, take it back. They didn't kill it, they tabled it. And what that means when they tabled it, they can vote to bring it back off the table and try to, re try to enact this thing later on. Anytime before uh, the, the legislative season ends, they can try to bring this thing back, okay? So uh, it could still be a devastating situation. Uh, what they have to do is they have to negotiate between themselves and get all them amendments out of there and get them off of there so they can bring it back up. Okay? But one of the reasons Dennis Powers said this didn't affect Campbell County is because uh, one of the things in here, they said you have to reside in Tennessee and, z and is zoned as students, eligible student, <coughs> has to reside in Tennessee and is zoned to, stint, uh, to attend or enroll in a public school that at the time of the student's initial application for a scholarship is identified as being in the bottom 5% of schools overall, in overall achievement as determined by the performance standards and other criteria set by the state board. It doesn't say what those state standards are, performance standards are. It doesn't say what the criteria is. It just says set by the state board. Okay. Uh, if you go to the website and look at the state board, there's about 40 or 50 different standards and criteria on the state board's website. Well, which one of those criteria and which one of those uh, standards are going to apply to this situation? It doesn't say. Okay, so you cannot logically sit there and say it's not going to affect Campbell County based on the way this is written because you don't ever tell what standards and criteria is based on. Okay, so bottom line on this, folks, really is if this thing had went through without all them 22 amendments, if this thing had went through the way it was written, okay, According to Mr. Marlowe, Jeff Marlowe, our finance director, it could have, and, and like one of the callers said, you know, Jeff Marlowe used a very low number, being generous, it could have, based on 110 students, devastated Campbell County's financial uh, school says financial situation, $737,000, which would have meant, because of the maintenance of effort, okay, which would have meant that the county commission would have had to raise taxes 11 cents to make up that. That's your property taxes, folks. Okay, we've had the last two years we've had some uh, devastating property tax increases. Okay, uh, Mr. Slusher said here for two years 
and telling you all about you know the tax increases and, and just how high they were okay so we would have had another one just for the school system not anything else you know you're on the air yeah, I was going to see if Camel County School on the right time tomorrow. I have no idea. I've not heard anything about it. All right, thank so you. So pay attention to WLAF tonight, and, and you'll, they'll let you know, okay? All right, thank, thank you. you. If I hear anything before the, uh, uh, the program's over, which we've only got about 10 more minutes, um... I'll see if we can find out. Somebody out there that's in the know on schools to remark, call me and let me know or text me. And let me know what the situation is. Okay? So, uh, the uh, situation is, yeah, if you take some of the kids that are, and, and obviously this was designed at the kids who were performing the absolute worst, okay? Uh, and I think, you know, and it would have gave them the opportunity to pick and choose. I think they had to stay in the same county. I believe they did. So as far as I know, if somebody else can tell me any different, uh, the Christian Academy is the only private school we have in Campbell County. If there's another one, I'm not sure of it. There may be one more, and I'm not real sure. Uh, but, you know, the, as far as I know, the only option would have been take them out of the Campbell County Schools and take them to the Christian Academy. And that money would have left the Campbell County School System and went to the Christian Academy with them. You're on the air. Hey, Jerry. Yes. I told you last week, old buddy. Yeah. If they change the school, they call you. Oh, I don't have any kids in school anymore. My kids are in college, so you know I don't get those notices. They called last night at ten o'clock and told us that the schools would be two hours delayed. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there you go, folks. Uh, if if. You know, and again, the best thing to me is just, you know, pay attention to WLF. WLF's real good about letting you know those things. Thank you. I think she hung up. You're on the air. Uh, Jerry, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just talked to Larry Nottifer, and uh, he said schools will be on time tomorrow. Okay. Time. So somebody's called and said they've talked to Mr. Nidefer and said schools are on time tomorrow. And I haven't heard any difference. So, um, you know, and, and I've looked at, uh, of course, I don't get out on the back roads, but uh, the roads I've traveled are, are absolutely fine, dry, dry as they can be. Now, I haven't been up in the mountain area, so I don't know what's going on up there. So as far as we know, schools are on time. Is that it? Okay, thank you, buddy. So, uh, so anyway, there you go. We got about six or seven more minutes. We got anything to talk about? I've, I've, I've spoke this up. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I just got a message from a school board member that says that schools are on time tomorrow. Okay, so that's that's from a school board member, and uh, <laughs> generally they know those things. Okay, so. Um, if we're all done, we're all in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, pro I'm gonna probably call it a night, call it early. Um, unless you've got something else you want to talk about for a few minutes, uh, I'm hoping to have uh, a guest on here next week, uh, and uh, I think he will want to talk about this a little bit, this school thing a little bit, along with a couple of other things. I think he'll want to talk about, uh, and hopefully it works out, and he gets to come in here and said. Um, somebody you all all know, somebody you 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 have a lot of respect for, uh, and I know he loves this community, he loves this county, and I talked to him about this program today, and and uh, he's as much against it as I am, and uh, I asked him to be on here, and he said he'd try to get on here next week, 
So hopefully we'll have a guest with us next week. And uh, hey, honeybee. So uh, if we don't have anything else to talk about, if I can get honeybee's attention, I'm going to wrap it up. Okay, so uh, I've read you everything I, that I think you need to know about this program, folks. Uh, contact your county commissioners, your school board members. Okay, I told you last week, and, and, you know, you have more success on these programs if you, if you as the citizens, will contact your representatives and let them know how you feel about these things. Okay. Let them know how you feel about them, and you'll have more success in stopping something like this, because this this is no good. Do you want to pay 11 cent tax increase for this program, and you're not sure it's going to help anybody? Okay, so we about ready, honeybee. I think uh, I think I've talked about all I can talk, uh, folks, and I'm going to let it go a few minutes early tonight. I'm going to go meet the warden, and we're going to go get us something to eat. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next week. When every second counts, count on Vital Care.